Hope you guys are ready to go, having a good night. Got my project behind me here. This is a Ethan Allen dresser. It's in pretty rough shape, so unless you're going to like totally sand it down to real wood and refinish it, which not really what I do too much of, it's good to paint it and a uh, good boho style will kind of hide some of the flaws and give it a little bit more unique character. So sit back, relax. I've been busy picking out colors. The nice thing about the boho or color rush style is that there are really no rules. I try to use a little bit of art color wheel study, I guess. It, this is teal. The complement of green is red. I'm not gonna put any red on it, but I definitely want to bring in reds as a complement color, so I'll bring in a little bit of that. But then a, a variety of teals and blues. So I'm just gonna kind of wing it. Some tools I have tonight. I've got a um, palette knife. I've got a pretty, I guess they call it medium or large paintbrush. This is a Klingon brush. Really like these a lot. Got some paper plates just to put some paint on and mix it up so I don't have to keep dipping into different colors. And then I've also got a pretty big bottle of water. Um, you might see others use different mixtures and colors in their water. I'm just, I'm just using to get everything wet. So I'll be using that a lot tonight. That's really about it. So I'm going to try and move the camera around to uh, show different size, but maybe just for the demo tonight, I'll do the front. You kind of have to work in a section at a time because with this water technique, it's just going to drip. So you want to make sure that you finish that section because uh, if you try and come back and re-wet it, just, it's not going to work. So I'll do the front first. If, and if I like it, um, I'll keep going with the sides. And right now I've got uh, a few colors, so I'm just going to put a few uh, here on my plate and we'll get going with that. The nice thing about projects like this is that it's a good opportunity to maybe finish up a tube of paint because Again, it doesn't really matter if you use a lot of it or a little bit. Just make sure you unify the whole project. If you're going to put a light color on the front, echo it somewhere on the side. Just that is going to help kind of unify it all together. The disadvantage of using a lot of colors at the end of the tube is sometimes they dry up. So you may have to dip in on that. But um, there's plenty of help videos out there. Tons of people doing live Facebook lives. So I'm in no way um, the ultimate source in this technique, but I just thought, hey, I'd jump into this and get this going. So first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and wet the surface down. I'm not gonna wet the whole um, whole process. Sorry, I cut off here. I just wanna really work in just the front area. And normally I would tape off the dresser drawers, but when you're doing this technique, it's just gonna run. And so I'm not painting the inside of the drawers, but normally I would. Since I'm going with a darker teal, I call it medium teal, I guess. I'm gonna use a little bit of a, a lighter color and um, kind of lighten some of the areas out. <clears throat> And, uh, just bring in a little bit of contrast. I like to pop these decorative elements. I really want those to stand out. So right now I'm just kind of hitting a few spots. <clears throat> I painted the, <clears throat> the dresser with two coats, that teal first. And um, <clears throat> right now I'm just kind of highlighting a few spots. And, uh, Bring in some of the original color. You'll see some people do that if you want to mix it. But right now, you're kind of doing what we would call a wet on wet technique. You wet the surface. And this really gives you a lot of flexibility here. Painting. So we're going to put a little bit of color in here. Notice I'm not going too far. 
I'm just gonna keep making this work. If it dries up on you, just wet it again. But the paint, the original color underneath is not wet, so this is all fresh paint right now that I'm mixing together. One of the things I don't like to do on this technique is you don't really want too much um, dry brush. There are plenty of opportunities for dry brush techniques, but this one you want to look a little bit more fluid. Now, you saw me wetting the top part. A lot of that was so that I can come back and work, work in those areas again. Kind of see how rough I wanted to go with the piece. There's nothing wrong with getting some inspiration from other artists, especially if you haven't done this for a long time. But whatever you do, I don't recommend that you copy then what's the point in that? You're just doing what everybody else is doing as far as trying to copy a piece. They've already invented that style of time for me to come up with their own. So that's one thing I like about this style is I can really kind of make it up as I go. Hopefully I'm not copying too much. I just want the piece to look cool. Get someone else to enjoy it. So, so far I'm still only working two colors. Um, I think that's a pretty good start right there. I'm not doing any fancy blending right now. I don't really want it to look predictable and like I airbrushed it. I want to bring in some of this darker color. Again, I'm still working what we call analogous, which it's all the same family. I haven't uh, really brought in um, too much comp. I haven't brought in a compliment color yet. Um, right now I'm just doing some of the, the texturing. You want this dress to look like it's older than it is. You're almost treating this like a piece of art. I'd be joking if I didn't tell you that I felt like Bob Ross when I bought this palette knife out, which I was never recommending for. <laughs> Not a great style of painting, but. So. In a minute, I'm going to do some more of this, but with some different colors, but now I'm adding a texture to it. A lot of people use the palette knife as an opposite effect to distressing. And trying to keep this canvas, if you will, wet. How much texture you put is totally up to you. I think I would let the piece kind of talk to me, approach, talk to me a little bit. Because if you're trying to go with fine furniture, I don't think I would really do too much of this technique. Unless you want to make it look like the furniture was left out in the farmhouse for something for a hundred years. But, um, now's the time to come back and wet this all down. If you feel like you got too much too much um, paint, scrape some down, or even come back with your brush. You can even do a little stippling if you want. You're blending it, but you really want to. Right now, I'm just removing a little bit of excess paint. This is the fun part, just kind of letting it go. You may have to do a little bit of crowd control, if you will. If it's too wet, you can't really take the water off too much. It's kind of 
I do see the moon slowly down. Keep in mind too that a lot of this is going to drip on the shelf for that. All right, so I'm going to take a. This is the complement of, of, of color. I'm almost really creating more of a rust approach. You're almost wanting to look like the dresser sitting out in the weather too long. Hey, Barry. Good to see you. The goal here is to make it. Because remember that I'm going to also try and stress this, um, meaning I'm going to not just stress it, but I'm going to wash it. Out. But isn't it great how that complement color really makes a big difference and makes the rest of the piece kind of come together? When you're painting the canvas or oil painting, a lot of times, you know, Usually you want to paint the light from the two lights last. So you can see it, I guess, kind of the medium tone, put in some darks now and bringing in some light, uh, some light colors. And I'm just going to go back and soften those. I don't want to wash them off. I'm just softening those orange colors. So I'll play with the other colors a little bit. Sometimes it's nice to have a very bit white. You're going to take sometimes like a chip brush if you want to just kind of soften with a light touch. And then you probably aren't quite moving as much as you want. You don't want globs of paint, so be careful about that in a bit. Now, I think last thing I'm going to do, or next step, is going to be bringing a little bit more even light. I really want to do that with my chalk. With the palette knife. So, my brain's working slower than most of you. So here, we've got a very light, very light teal. This is where you might just come back. And just touch a few spots. You're not really trying to do too much with that. Just pop a few highlights in there. Sometimes you might just just a few places. I like to put a few around the hardware, kind of attract the eye there. Not overdoing this, just a little bit here and there. I'm going to go ahead and wet the. Let me get the paint out of the way. Wet the bottom and keep going down there. This set actually had a wide dresser, but the wide dresser was in worse shape. And I think I'm going to keep the wide dresser and um, make it my new paint cabinet. You'll find out for time that sometimes <laughs> you need more room to paint that. And so I had to I know, put, make the drawers the shelves. I had a drawer that just worked. I mean, about everything I felt like I wanted to do. On a drawer that I think from being warped, but all failed, so I'm just gonna make them in the shelves and keep that piece. But I was able to get this one. Unfortunately, I bought this piece, um, I would call it rather hastily. 
one of those things you tell your kid not to do. And you should try to advise somebody. Never make a rush to each decision. But the scenario was that this guy was selling dressers, and I had only a few minutes to go get it. The set it was not a bad price. I didn't lose a lot of money on it. It was raining and pouring. I had limited time on getting help. So I pretty much said, okay, but I should have inspected a little bit more to the door from sticking. Probably what has happened is the, the dressers were sitting outside and the humidity and they were still sticking. So I left this one in my office for about maybe a month or two. And the humidity started, the dresser started drying out and the doors would open. So, yay, perfect. I think this is going to make a really nice piece for someone that likes the style. Now, every once in a while, go back and look at it because you'll see things happening that you might not like. And maybe a little bit of spray or even coming back with you. Just a little bit of a fanning might change up some of the things you don't like about it. And then get another spray. Like maybe colors aren't mixing the way you want it to or not looking right. Like I said, just kind of keep an eye on it. I don't want too much of that really bad streaking. But if you keep it wet, you can always come back to it and add some more paint to it as you move ahead, so I'll keep, keep an eye on that. So I'm not trying to be perfect here and create any kind of scene. I'm just really trying to get paint on here. I thought paint can't blind it. I will guarantee you this type of work is not for everybody. And people who are buying your work, they might want to be really classy. But I just know that every time I've done this, it's fun to do and it always sells. So we'll keep going with it. what I call that. So now I'm going to bring in my dark color. Should have enough working time to go back. It's still kind of wet up there. And, um, you kind of have to decide if you've done enough. That's your call. I mean, that's that's up to you. There's some great people online who do this for a living. I don't. Maybe when I'm old and gray, I'll retire and do this. I was thinking that day, I'm not sure if I could do this one for the day. This furniture is really heavy to move. So you may not find too many retired people doing dressers. I guess I could hire somebody to come over and say, hey, can you move this to my car? All right, so let's spray it down. Really trying to get some more of this run going on. The nice thing I noticed that with this technique, you can't really, well, I guess you could overspray it, but you can always reapply paint if you spray too much. If you haven't noticed, I have a tarp down because this is pretty messy. I'm just going to put a little bit of coat on there, keep it wet. Yeah, but not like that. 
Just kind of getting some of the thicker paint spread out. And then I'll go back and get rid of my brush marks. You could dab at this if you want some texture. I'm just kind of controlling some. Um, what you don't want to do is start fixing too much because um, you will be mixing colors and it just needs a little bit of the fry and the blue. I'm counting on the dark glaze to help unify a lot of this, so I'm too worried. First time, it doesn't start dripping right away. It's got to like soak up the water. You may have to give it a second, let it soak it in, and then come back. And the next time you spray it, it will start running like crazy. So you can see it just as soon as I hit that again, it just takes off. So don't give it any implementation. Now that color I put in there is not so intense. But just the imperfections of runs and drips. If you don't like the runs and drips, you can come back with a powder knife. Sometimes just kind of disguises a little bit, make it look rougher. Things are still kind of wet, so definitely fine. Stay tuned, and I'm glad you guys could join me tonight. It looks like what's coming on, so. If you have any questions, holler out, but um, I'm going to probably start working on the sides. That's the end of the show. Make sure you subscribe and ring the bell before you go. Bye.